Hello and welcome to another episode of Bare Bones Wargaming, a show with no bells, no whistles, no frills, just a man, a camera, and his game. This episode, we are once again heading for the Ost Front, the Eastern Front, yet again, dealing with the latest issue of World at War magazine and Operation Typhoon. A solitaire game designed by Ty Bomba. Now, as the name implies, this is all about the last German lunge for Moscow in the fall of 1941. Now, this game uses a system that is similar to a game that appeared in World of War magazine a while back, sometime in 2015. I don't remember the exact issue number called... Uh, Panzer's uh, East, uh, which is also a solitaire game. Um, this has the same mechanics with a few changes um, to reflect the situation that we have here. So basically the game, you're playing the German side, and as you can see here, we'll zoom in a little bit, um, you have the different groups involved here. You have the 2nd Army, the 9th Army, the 2nd uh, and 4th and third to Panzer groups, including way down here, where I deployed them on the bottom of the map. Over here with the unit that has the seven on top, the three divisions that make up, make up my beloved 24th Panzer Corps, which I'll use to highlight this um, instructional part of this. And this is going to be a brief video of instruction because this game is and has the potential to be um, a very long game. I'll show you why here. In a minute. So basically, you're commanding all these forces, and of course, naturally trying to get to the ultimate prize, which the ultimate prize here is way up here in Moscow. You're either trying to get to one of the Moscow hexes or cut Mos Moscow off completely at the end of any given turn. So basically, pocket it if you will. Okay, speaking of pocketing. I'm sure you probably already noticed this big red blob in the middle here, so let's talk about that for a second. In this particular game set, what you end up doing is having a continuous front line. Now, if you look here, you can see this white line, okay, that denotes the starting front line. This side, of course, is the German side. The other side is the Soviet. As German forces advance, they get control of hexes, and the front line changes. So here you can see I took this German unit and lunged towards uh, the Viasma defense line and just experimenting with some things um, because you know, I just got this. Uh, the rules are pretty straightforward. There's only 12 pages of rules. Um, there's some nice examples explaining uh, how the rules work and stuff which is very um, I guess is the word I want is unusual for a magazine game but uh, I really haven't had a whole lot of questions about the rules. It's been pretty straightforward, but again, I am familiar with Panzer E Solitaire. So, that helped as well, too. But basically, all these hexes you see here now are controlled by the Germans. And, of course, now if I take a unit from a little bit further away, which I'm about to do here for demonstration purposes, I can go ahead and drive them and then basically create a pocket. Um, once I punch through, I can create a big old pocket and then, you know, see if the Soviets attempt to break out of it or not. Now creating pockets is important in this game because at the end of the first two turns you have to have a total of 200, that's right, let me say that again, 200, 200 zero, zero, pocket hexes. Otherwise you lose the game at the end of turn two. So that's a lot of pocketing to do, but you need it so uh, to keep the game going. There's other things too in this game. In the first few turns there are a lot of stipulations of what you need. Not only do you need that, you have to have um, 16, I believe it's 16 victory points worth uh, of objectives by the end of turn three, which you get victory points for cities and towns. Otherwise you lose. And also, um, I think it's, I know it's turn three, you also have to have a continuous front which basically means every single one of your German units has to occupy a hex along the front or a hex has to be in the zone of control of a German unit. So you're going to have to spread your people out basically um, is what that's getting at there. So there are a lot of different ways to lose this game. 
uh, as the player. Okay, so with that in mind, let's kind of just jump into this. It's pretty straightforward. Every single turn, uh, the German forces get to move, and combat is actually part of movement. There's no separate combat phase here, which I'll show you here in a moment. Uh, over here on this side of the map, you can see, not surprisingly, with a magazine game, you've got lots of charts and tables that you use to make the game function. Okay, starting up here at the top, you have uh, movement points. There are set movement points for each type of unit, either mechanized or non-mechanized each turn. Then you actually have the turn record track and keeping track of how many movement points you have remaining because, again, combat is a function of movement. There is no separate uh, combat phase here. So unlike you could say, quote-unquote, traditional war games, uh, combat is integrated into the movement phase. Okay, then you have your sudden death track where you got to keep track of the pocketed hexes and stuff. And then you have the charts for the Soviet forces, either break out once you've created a pocket or Soviet forces defending as you move into each hex. And kind of the combat itself is basically you're rolling a number dice equal to the strength of the unit and you have your hit numbers here. So generally speaking for the Germans, 4, 5, and 6 gets a hit. For the Soviets, only a 5 or a six okay and then of course you have the terrain effects chart down here at the bottom so let's head out here and let's just look at this here now one thing you have to be careful with this game is in terms of stacking and movement you can have three divisions in each hex and that also applies when you are moving so unlike some other war games where you know if you've got a, a fully stacked hex you can move units through so long as you don't stop it doesn't exist here you can't do that, okay? So you got to bear that in mind, okay? And each force has to move completely, either expending all of its movement points or stopping when you want it to stop before you can move the next force, okay? So that's pretty much the upshot there. All right, so with that in mind, let's just go ahead here and show you how some of the basic mechanics work. Of the game I'm going to zero in here because what I'm going to do just for demonstration purposes here is I'm going to activate elements of the fourth panzer group and basically have them advance over to here and create a pocket here and then we'll see how the breakout attempt um, also happens as well as the movement itself okay now these two units here are two armored divisions uh, that are part of fourth panzer group the fifth and while well, the third uh, mechanized one there. So we're going to go ahead and start moving into this hex here. They have 14 movement points, so I'll put the marker up here on 14, and we will begin our advance here now. Now, most of the counters in the game, quite frankly, uh, just to show you, here's the one half of the counter sheet. It's all these control markers showing where the front line is at. Um, because again, this concept of the front line is integral um, and critical, vital even, I guess you could say, to how the game has played this particular um, rule set. Okay, So we're going to start out by going into here. Okay, This is going to be our first destination hex. All right? So we're going to go ahead and move, and we're going to cross that river hex side, which costs us two extra movement points. So here we go. We're lunging into the hex. And to quote Yogi, away we go. Hey, boo boo. So let's see what we get with this picnic basket, which is probably not a whole lot here. Okay. And of course, since I'm moving this forward, what I'm going to do right away is to establish the front line that exists now with these markers. Okay. So I've moved into this hex. I've deducted the movement points. And the Germans also get Luftwaffe markers too uh, if they want to assign them to them. I'm just not assigning it to this particular one, but you can. So now this next thing we do is we find out who is in that hex. So every time you move into a hex, okay, you have got to, let me just go ahead and zoom in some more here. You have to check and see who's home, so to speak, and how the battle is going to go. Okay, so on the chart here, Soviet defending hex, I'm moving into a clear hex. Um, so it's clear, forest, or marsh hex. I need to go ahead and roll a die and find out who is there, okay? If anybody, maybe nobody's home. So let's see. So I roll a die, and I roll a three. Now on the chart, a three 
for a clear hex is a dash. So nobody home so far. Lucky me. It did cost me three movement points to find that out. But that's okay because what I'm going to do is I'm going to continue here and I'm going to create a nice size pocket in this space as we go along. That is my plan anyway to drive north, well east I guess of Yelena here and pull that off. So I'm going to move into this hex now. And yeah, these are half inch counters, so that's a bit annoying, I have to admit. So I'm moving into this hex, so again, we're re-establishing the front line by laying down another Soviet hex, or Soviet counter, I should say, right here. Okay, so now this hex is German controlled, and the Soviet front line has now again been re-established as I prepare to drive again here. So I'm going to go ahead and focus on pocketing Yelena here, and then I'm going to go ahead and focus on driving elsewhere from there. So, I moved into this hex. So again, we're going to check it. It is cleared terrain. I deduct the movement point, which is only one for a mechanized one. That leaves me with 10 movement points. Again, I started with 14 because that's what the turn record chart says. So there's no movement factors here. The number you see is the combat factor, which we should get to use here. If nothing else, we'll use it with the pocket. So I'm moving into this clear hex here. Ooh. Okay, I rolled a six. So let's see what the six says for clear terrain. So clear terrain, I've run into some serious trouble here. I've run into three rifle divisions. I've also run into two battalions of like mixed units and stuff. So it's not exactly earth shattering. And I've run into one artillery unit as well. Okay. And that artillery unit, I have to double check and see if it's the heavy mortar one, because it does make a difference. It gives the Soviets a plus one modifier on their die rolls if it is the heavy mortar type. Yeah, it's heavy, no, it's heavy howitzer, so it's not the heavy mortar. Let me just double check here and make sure, heavy mortars, yeah, okay. All right, so combat is done in rounds, okay. And basically, we follow this procedure, which there's the, the, the fire combat procedure here on the side of um, the charts over here on the left off camera. And basically, you're going to roll the dice, pick a target, and basically try to destroy it. Okay. Now, you have to target a particular unit. You have to pick. So it's kind of like when you play War at Sea. You pick a particular ship to fire at, okay, which of course as you can see with so many extra Soviet units versus I only have two German units there, that means it's going to take more than one round of combat, which is a lot. However, every single round of combat that the Germans do expends another movement point to do so. So my pocket here, um, I still have two more hexes I need to go to, well actually one, two, three more hexes I need to go to create that pocket, so I may not be able to close it. We'll have to wait and see. Okay, so following the procedure here, Soviet combat aviation, nope, fire German support, nope, fire Soviet artillery, yes, there is one Soviet artillery unit. So it's going to open fire, probably of course the strongest German unit there, and it was a two. Two plus one is three, and again, Soviets need a five or six to hit, no dice, all right? So now down to the next one, we fire German Unit. So I've got this German unit here, which is a six, which gets to roll six dice, and I've got one with a four. Okay. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and try to trim down some of these Soviet units. I'll focus with the six dice on the big artillery unit first. Because, of course, since it gets the plus one modifier, that makes sense. All right. Waiting for one die to finish. So I rolled a couple of fives, which is two hits worth of damage on a particular unit. And that will destroy that heavy artillery unit. Now, generally speaking, Soviet forces just go back into the pool to come back later, unless they are Soviet guard units. Guard units and airborne units, once they are eliminated, they are replaced with basic rifle divisions and which of course are weaker and that's that from that perspective okay so now i'm going to go ahead and use my four step ones here 
I'm going to use them to try and destroy one of these other units to again basically um, you know whittle things down here uh, so to speak and not give the the Soviets uh, as much time um, to to battle their way back so to speak that's basically um, uh, the plan that I have here uh, for all this okay um, just double check on one thing here just to make sure I am being correct on this okay. yeah you fire you are inflicted on the specific unit you fired at excess hits are ignored uh, no hits may be taken on a one step unit until all two step units have suffered at least one hit oh so you know what that artillery unit has to come back I can't do that so let me bring that back out. I had to target something, one of the rifle divisions, which I got two hits on, so that wipes out the rifle division. So, okay, my mistake there. All right, so now I'll take the four dice and go after one of the other rifle divisions, which I rolled a six on. Now that's good for the Germans because a six is two hits worth, so that destroys that rifle division as well. Now the rest of the Soviet units are going to open fire here and the rifle division which gets to roll two dice will open fire out and go after the six units which unfortunately is going to end very badly here because they got two hits. They got the six and a five so that reduces this German unit completely. It's been wiped out. Yikes! That was unfortunate. Bad break there. And the other two brigades didn't get a hit at all. Now, as the Germans, I could go ahead and quit if I want, but I'm going to keep going for the purposes of this example just to show what happens here. So I have to spend another movement point. So I'm dropping myself down to nine to conduct another round of combat. The Soviet heavy mortars get to go first. And they missed, so that's good news. So now I've got my four-strength German unit, and I'm going after one of these rifle divisions. And I managed to secure three hits total. I rolled a six and a five. But excess hits are ignored. So I destroyed the rifle division, which is good. But that's it. All right, so now the two Soviet brigades will get a chance to shoot at my mechanized unit. And they missed with a three and a one. So again, I could quit, retreat, fall back to the hex I came from, which is here, which is, would be absurd. I'm going to keep going. So, Soviet Heavy Artillery fires again, and it misses again, which is good. All right, my one German unit, I've got four. I'll go after the Heavy Artillery now, because all I have left is two-step units, and I succeeded in destroying that. So that unit is destroyed and sent back into the pool. And now I've got the two Soviet brigades, and they both missed with a two and with a one. But again, I have to expend another movement point. So although I'm winning this, this is taking time. Lots and lots of time. All right, so once again, I'll get to shoot. I'll go after one of these brigades. And I was able to destroy it, no sweat. Leaving the other Soviet brigade still intact, which missed. And now I've got my units again after I spend my movement point, which takes me all the way down to only six movement points now. And I was able to successfully defeat those guys as well, too. Okay, so finally I managed to finish that off. Now, at the end of a battle, if the Germans are successful, any eliminated German units come back in and are placed in the hex, but on their reduced side. Now, that's after, after every single battle during the first five turns, which seems a little weird because, you know, usually we think in war games when something's eliminated, that's the end of the line. Not in this particular case. And one thing I did like about how the rules were set up was um, Ty Bomba did explain, like in that section, you know, the reason for this rule, which basically was like the Soviets did not have the strength and ability to finish off German formations at this point in time. So there was always some strength left the unit was able to still function um, kind of like timex take a beating and keep on you know take a licking rather take a licking and keep on ticking 
uh, was the catchphrase if you're old enough to remember that. So that Panzer Division that was at six is back in play at a three, which is not so great, but hey, at least it's a three. All right, so let's continue on here now. And let's try to continue making our pockets. So we're going to drive now into this hex. So once again, we reestablish the front line with the Soviet control markers. So now the front line is here. And we moved into this hex, which drops us down to five movement points. And let's take a look and see, is anybody home? Knock, knock. Who's there? No one. No one who? No one cares. So that worked out all right. So now we will continue on once again. I'll remove this marker and drive these guys into here. Once again, reestablishing the Soviet front line as it is for the moment. And again, using another movement point that drops me down to four. See if anybody's home this time. Let's see. This time around, there is somebody home. There is a rifle division. A single rifle division is home in that hex. So once again, we'll have a battle here. Now again, going down through the chart, the first units they're going to be able to fire are the German units. So I will put the firepower of my Panzer Division with three dice on them, which scored one hit. And then the four dice for my mechanized units, which scored another hit, completely destroying that rifle division, even before it had a chance to fire back. But again, except for Soviet guards and airborne units, these guys always get recycled. So I was victorious. And now we will move into this hex here. Now creating a pocket that'll be down here to the south with my three movement points that are remaining. Okay? So, it's not a very big pocket, but again, the town is in there. So if I manage to reduce the pocket, I will capture the town, which will give me a victory point, which I need, and also begin my pocketed areas here. So once you've created a pocket, whatever force creates the pocket, in this case, these two guys here from 4th Panzer Group, they are the ones that are going to have to deal with the breakout, okay, as the Soviets hit. Now, the breakout procedure is a tiny bit different, so we'll talk about it here real quick um, once we get everything established. So the first thing we have to do with the breakout procedure is we've got the pocket formed, okay? So here's the pocket from here all the way down to the white dashed lines that were the original front line. So pocket is formed, okay? Pocket size. So now we have to count all the hexes to see how big this pocket is. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. There are 14 hexes in this pocket. So that's a pretty sizable pocket. Okay? Now we've got to find out how many Soviet breakout units there are. This is a different chart than what we were just using as we moved into each hex. Let's see what we get here. So the number of hexes per thing is 14. So, wow, that's going to be a lot of individuals trying to break out of that pocket here. A little more than I thought. There is going to be a total of five units. Now, when you're doing a breakout attempt, you take all the Soviet units that are available. Okay? All the ones, rifle division, artillery, brigades. Okay? All those guys... But notice not guards or airborne units, okay? And we're going to draw five of them out of the cup. So we're going to put the artillery, the brigades, and the rifles into here. And we're going to pull five out total for this breakout fight. So let's see, I got two brigades, 
and one Katyushka rocket. And I got one rifle division too. Okay. So that is the force that is composed there. Now, of course, when it comes to fighting regular battles, they're going to have to be broken down again because, uh, as we noted before when we rolled on the chart, it specifically tells you how much you need of each. I'm just double checking here the rule that I'll make sure what it says. Soviet breakout. Place all currently available Soviet rifle, artillery, units, and brigades, but not guards and airborne. Okay, just want to make sure. Okay, so those guys don't come into the game unless generated by the table where you're moving into the hexes. Okay, so now with the breakout attempt that is done, um, German units get to fire first, even before the Soviet artillery units do. That is noted here. Um, Note in breakout battle, Soviet artillery units fire in step five. Okay, so I'm going to use my three dice guy and, of course, go after the Soviet rifle division. Which, ooh, that's so good. I missed. So now I'll have to use my mechanized division. They had more luck. They scored three hits, but again, any excess hits, any overkill, to quote men at work, becomes superfluous. So those guys are eliminated, but now we'll see if these Soviet forces can break out or not. Okay, so we got the two artillery units here. They missed. And now we got the two brigades. Ouch. One of the brigades did score a hit, so I'm going to have to flip my mechanized guys down. So now I've got three and two left. Okay, to continue with this particular battle. Um, so, we had our round. The Soviet forces tried to break out, okay? But there's only one round of combat in breakout, so it's all or nothing here. Either the Soviets manage to bust their way out, or they do not, okay? So let's see. All German units in the breakout hex eliminated. <clears throat> Wrong! Let's try the next rule. Failed breakouts, okay? At the end of the surviving German units in the breakout hex, the breakout attempt failed, and it did. Okay, Soviets are returned to the pool. Surviving German units are there, and again, eliminated two steps, come back and with one play, and then the German force can keep on rolling if it has movement points, which we do. We still have um, three movement points left, so I still could drive with these guys if I so desired. And now we're going to take those 14 breakout points and we're going to record them here on the Sudden Death Victory Point track. So let me show you that, which is up here with the charts and tables. So now we've recorded this here. I've got 14 towards my total of 200. And now, of course, we'll come back over here. Do -do 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 -do. And we will adjust our front line to reflect the new reality, which the new reality is all these hexes here are now German controlled. And Yelena has fallen, which is a town which is worth one victory point. So I'm on my way to my 16 victory points for that as well. Now I've got three movement points remaining, so I could go ahead and I could drive and follow the riverbank here and then eventually create another pocket by using forces from here. So to finish them off, let's just go ahead and do that. So we'll go ahead and plow into this hex here. Again, reforming the line. And I'm following the river line because it costs more movement points to go across the river. And of course, if there actually is combat, then that of course affects things. There's more. Um, uh, there's a modifier for whoever's defending. So I rolled a one. Which basically, to, put, to, to make it simple and easy, a one through a three means you basically run into nothing. Um, early in the game. Now as the game goes on, when you get to later turns, there get to be modifiers onto each one of these die rolls, reflecting, of course, stiffening Soviet resistance as you close in on Moscow. So with my two remaining movement points, 
I'm going to go ahead and keep plowing up across the riverbank here. Moving into this hex here. And again, these are half inch counters, so that is a little tough. The nice thing is, at least for eyes, you don't have to worry about much because you only got one number to read. So I'm down to one movement point next. Here. Oh, we did roll a four though. Let's see what we get for a four. So a four in a clear hex is one rifle division. So let's do one last combat real quick here. Okay, the German forces will get to fire first. So the Panzer division with its three dice. Oh, a three, one, and a one. Missed. So now I've got the two dice of the mechanized. Infantry. Yikes, they missed too. It's a three and a two. All right, so now the Soviets, with the strength of two on the left division, will fire back. They missed a four and a three. So I'm going to have to spend my last movement point to try and finish off and win this battle. So let's see if I can. So Panzer Division scored a hit. And the mechanized infantry were able to finish the job off. Okay, now, if I hadn't been able to, let's say that this and it is a battle where I was not able to, then the German forces go back one hex to where they started from. And again, any eliminated units are returned as a one-step unit for the first five turns. And then you would just move the front marker back to reflect that. And since this force is done, I'm going to go ahead and rotate them to show that they are kaput, at least for this turn until later. And that's basically it. Basically, you're going to be moving all these forces. So you can see what I meant before about this will take a while to play because if you're doing this for every single force, and even if you maximize the stacks and put three units in each stack, which maybe I should have, just but I was experimenting, you know, with this and stuff, um, it's going to take a while because this game can last potentially uh, eight turns. That's a lot of dice rolling to do. Okay. Not only for each hex you move into, but also um, when it comes to uh, combat, as you can see, it's basically a to hit combat, a standard kind of thing, fives and sixes. Generally speaking, the Germans also hit on a, on a die roll of four um, as well. So, um, this game does remind me a little bit of Drive on Moscow, which is an S&T game. I forget which issue that was in. Um, I have that one. I have played that one before a number of times. And I have enjoyed that a lot. Um, but again, you know, I bought this because, you know, I'm into the East Front. I mean, anything East Front, I always have my eye on. Um, but uh, I'll be honest, now with two kids, I think I, I need to start being a little more discerning. And taking advantage of things like uh, the rules being posted online, which, you know, decision games usually post their rules online. So if I had realized that this was going to be similar to Panzer's East, um, I probably wouldn't have picked it up, to be completely honest about it. Um, but again, I mean, it's, it's, it's not necessarily a bad game. I just don't know, you know, owning Drive on Moscow is this superfluous. I mean, it's a different experience, that's for sure. Um, Drive on Moscow is a little different animal, but, um, you know, but if you're into the Eastern Runt and you don't mind all the die rolling and stuff that, that goes with this, you know, this game um, can be can be fun and can be your cup of tea. And of course, it can end very quickly, too, if you don't pay attention. Like I said, there's those three uh, victory conditions that you have to accomplish when you do the victory check at the end of each turn. Uh, for the first couple of turns, otherwise, basically, the offensive, you, you know, you lose your, well, I guess for lack of a better way to put it, you lose your mojo, and that's the end of that, so, all right, so, that's the new game, Operation Typhoon, just to give you a little bit of an idea of what it's like, how it feels, um, so, yeah, I'm tempted to pull out Drive on Moscow and compare it with it here, but I'll probably push these counters around a little bit more uh, before I decide to go ahead and, um, you know, move on to, to something else. Again, it's not, it's not, I don't think it's a bad game. I think the rule book is, is actually very well written. I really had no questions when I was finished reading the rules. Um, there's even an alternate history scenario too that you can look into, 
um, for this, but the length of time it would take me to complete this game with my time being a part at a premium now having two boys um, <laughs> to look after, I, I just don't feel like I have the time to invest in in something like this. Something that, you know, again, Drive on Moscow plays a lot quicker uh, than this does. So, um, but it is neat. I mean, I, I have to admit, I like the concept of the, of the front line kind of ideas and, you know, that's how you can make your pockets and things like that. So I think that's a, that's a neat and clever way to represent the Eastern Front. All right, next episode, which might be a little while in the making. I'm not sure where I'm going right now. I'll be honest, once I get done with this, um, I've pulled out the rule book for um, Operation Kremlin, which is total alternate history. As you can see there, the campaign for Moscow 1942, no case blue. Um, so I might go... With that, next I'm going to look over the rule book, which seems pretty straightforward um, and pretty um, simple, for lack of a better way to articulate um, at this point. But then again, I might go back to one of the block games, too, the Leningrad or Moscow 41, because i got to be honest, I'm really pumped about the Kiev 41 coming out, because when I, I first got um, Moscow 41 and Leningrad 41 back in um, the summer of 2017, uh, when I wrote my review, if you look at my review for Moscow 41 on Board Game Geek, one of the first things I mentioned was, you know, a a, uh, a uh, Rostov Crimea, you know, Kiev Crimea kind of thing to, to finish it off. Because I think that Army Group South is underrepresented um, when it comes to Eastern Front games. I mean, obviously the big emphasis is always on Army Group Center because, you know, the allure of Moscow and all that jazz and stuff. But um, Army Group South I always find intriguing because... That's where Stalin concentrated most of his forces, because interestingly enough, you know, Hitler sometimes gets um, um, gets a bad rap for, you know, talking about, you know, getting into the Ukraine because of the, you know, the economic resources that were there and, and that kind of thing. But the funny thing is that Stalin stacked most of his forces there because he thought that was going to be the main German emphasis for exactly that reason, because he realized the, the value of the resources and the industry. Um, that were in the South as well, too. And if you look at some other games, like Hitler Turns East, which is a great game in that four-game set of um, Four Roads to Moscow that was done in the journal um, annual, I should say, for Against the Odds magazine, uh, you know, most of the Victory Point cities are in the South. So, um, yeah, so in case you haven't guessed, I'm kind of heading towards... I think another East Front surge here. Um, now that my Pacific Theater, I think, is finally with hides washed out on, on that, so to speak. So, and Lord knows I've got enough East Front games. <clears throat> there are everywhere. They're ubiquitous in my collection, to use one of my favorite words. Okay, so uh, this will give you an idea. You know, decide if you're interested in picking up this latest edition of World of War magazine with Operation Typhoon. Solitaire. And this literally just came out just a few weeks ago. Um, this was on my watch list, so as soon as I saw that it was out, I pounced on it. Alright, so this has been Tim Korsner from Bare Bones Wargaming saying thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time from somewhere, um, somewhere on the Eastern Front. I'm not exactly sure where yet, but um, Operation Kremlin is a possibility. One of the block games is a possibility. But um, so is Four Battles of Army Group South. I have that classic game too, which has a Rostov um, scenario in it. So, so until next time from the Ost Front, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.